Good morning and welcome once more to morning prayer. Today is Monday the 15th of November. Today we'll be reading Psalms 116 and 117. We're also reading from the first book of Maccabees, chapter 3 verses 1 to 24, and then Revelations chapter 20 verses 7 to 15. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His Holy Word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness of our sins, and to seek His grace, that through His Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to His service. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let us worship and praise Him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise Your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We say together a shout to the Lord in triumph. A shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before His face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Come into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and bless His holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In a moment of my silence, we just call to mind our sins, the things that, that we've done that are displeasing to God, and, and things that may cause problems with our neighbours. And so we just confess our sins together. We pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We turn now to Psalm 116. It can be found on page 753 of the Anglican Prayer Book. I love the Lord because He heard my voice, the voice of my supplication, because He inclined His ear to me in the day that I called to Him. The cords of death encompassed me, the snares of the grave took hold of me. I was in anguish and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beseech you, deliver me. Gracious and righteous is the Lord, full of compassion is our God. The Lord preserves the simple, when, it was, when I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has rewarded you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed that I would perish. I was brought very low. I said in my haste, All men are liars. How shall I repay the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Grievous in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful one. O Lord, I am your servant, your servant and the son of your handmaiden. You have unloosened my bonds. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. 
I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, even in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. O praise the Lord, all your nations. O praise him, all you peoples. For great is his loving kindness towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is um, from 1 Maccabees, chapter 3, verses 1 to 24. And his son Judas, who was called Maccabeus, rose up in his place. And all his brothers assisted him along with all those who had joined themselves to his father. And they fought the battle of Israel with rejoicing. And he expanded the glory of his people. And he clothed himself with a breastplate like a giant. And he surrounded himself with his weapons of war in battles. And he protected the camp with his sword. In his actions he became like a lion like a young lion roaring in the hunt. And he pursued the wicked and tracked him down, and those who disturbed his people he burned with fire. And his enemies were repelled by the fear of him, and all the workers of iniquity were troubled, and salvation was well directed in his hand. And he provoked many kings, and he gave joy to Jacob by his works, and his memory will be a blessing for all generations. And he traveled through the cities of Judah, and he destroyed the impious out of them, and he turned wrath away from Israel. And he was renowned even to the utmost part of the earth, and he gathered together those who were perishing. And so Apollonius gathered together the Gentiles with a numerous and great army from Samaria to make war against Israel. And Judas knew about it, and he went forth to meet him, and he struck him, and he killed him, and many fell down wounded, and the rest fled away. And they took away their spoils, and Judas took possession of the sword of Apollonius, and he fought with it during his days. And Theron, the leader of the army of Syria, heard that Judas gathered together a company of the faithful, and was assembled with him. And he said, I'll make a name for myself, and I'll be glorified in the kingdom, and I will defeat Judas in warfare, and those who are with him who have spurned the word, the word of the king. And he prepared himself, and the camp of the impious went up with him with strong auxiliaries, so as to act with vengeance upon the sons of Israel. And they approached even as far as Beth Horon, and Judas went forth to meet him with a few men. But when they saw the army coming to meet him, they said to Judas, How will we be able to fight against so great and so strong a multitude, even though we are weakened by fasting today? And Judas said, It is easy for many to be enclosed in the hands of a few, for there is no difference in the sight of the God of heaven to liberate by means of many or by means of few. For victory in warfare is not in the multitude of the army, but in the strength from heaven. They come to us with a contemptuous multitude and with arrogance, in order to destroy us and our wives and our sons, and to despoil us. In truth, we fight on behalf of our souls and our laws. And the Lord himself will crush them before our face. But as for you, do not fear them. And as soon as he had ceased speaking, he attacked them suddenly, and Saron and his army were crushed in his sight. And he pursued them from the, the descent of Beth Horon, even to the plains. And eight hundred of their men were cut down, but the rest fled into the land of the Philistines. Here ends our first lesson. We say together the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. 
He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from Revelations chapter 20. Verse 7 through to 15. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number they are like the sand on the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them, and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulphur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw the great white throne, and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Here ends our second lesson. The book of Maccabees is quite interesting. We've often heard of battles where the Israelites went out with less of an army than those that were attacking them and they defeated those armies. They defeated them because they knew that God was with them and that God would give them the battle. God would help them to, to win. And so it should be with us as well. We don't go into battle like the Israelites. We don't have multitudes coming against us physically. But we all have mental and emotional battles that we fight every day of our lives. Sometimes they get worse. Other times they become easier. Sometimes those battles are caused by things like this pandemic that we're living through. We, we were all fearful, particularly at the start of it, because nobody understood what was happening. I remember that the, um, the uh, advice given was that if you go out shopping, as soon as you get home, take up all your clothes, put them in the wash machine, go and have a shower, scrub the soles of your shoes. Um, there was a multitude of things that were supposedly done to, to stop the virus because we didn't actually understand how it was spread, how we could collect it, how we could pick it up, how it would contaminate us. We had that fear. Very often people have 
fears of of loss, fears of losing a job, fears of losing income, fears of losing face, doing something that looks stupid and, and you lose face amongst your friends, fears of losing a loved one, a very real fear that we have in all of us nowadays. Some of our loved ones are, are ill. Some of them are suffering from this virus that I've been talking about. Some of them are suffering from from cancer or from old age, from heart failure, from a whole multitude of things that we all have to go through at some stage of our, our lives. We None of us will live forever. We all have various fears that are attacking us, just like those, just like that army was attacking Judas. What we have to do is, as Judas did, is to say, I trust in the Lord. I trust in God. I know that He will help me get through this. The outcome may not be exactly what I want, but I know that what God does and how He helps me will be the better option. And you need, and I need, to trust God in that way. The other thing, of course, that we learn from, from the reading today in, in, in Maccabees is that Judas didn't go and sit down with his troops on the hill and say, okay, now let's just check how God's going to do this and, and watch how that army is going to be destroyed. They went into battle. They did something. And we need to do the same. We can't just say, well, I've prayed to God and I've asked him for help and I've asked him for healing. I don't have to see any doctors. I don't have to do anything about it because God's going to sort it all out. We need to do our bits. We need to to be in partnership with God. We need to help him control the issue. But at the same time, we need to do our part in resolving the problem. And I just pray today that all of us with our various fears that we have will be able to rely on God to that extent where we can feel peace, where we can feel a calmness and an acceptance. Not an acceptance of doing nothing, but an acceptance, by, an acceptance of knowing that what we do will be what God wants us to do in those circumstances. I just pray that all of us can take some lesson from from the book of Maccabees today. Amen. We say together the song of the church. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of worship and the Holy Spirit advocate and guide, you, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people bought to the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Never let us be put to shame. We say now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, he died, and he was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, we ask you to give us your blessing. To your church, give holiness. To the world, give peace. To this nation, give justice. And to all people, the knowledge of your law. Keep safe our families, protect the weak, heal the sick, comfort the dying, and bring us all to a joyful resurrection. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The colleague for today. Glor Gracious Lord, your Son came to bring us good news and the power to transform our lives. Grant that when he comes again as judge, we may be ready to meet him with joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and the lover of concord, to know his eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, by all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defence, and not fear the power of any adversary through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting Father, you safely brought us to the beginning of another day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may be kept free from all sin, and safe from every danger. And enable us this day to do only what is right in your eyes, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father God, we just pray that as we go through our day today, as we go through our week, this coming week, and the months ahead of us, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to see the fears that we have for what they are. We pray, Lord, that you would give us the inspiration that we need to deal with those fears in the way that you would like us to deal with them. We know, Lord, that you will be helping us, and we thank you for that. And we just praise you, Lord, that you're always there to help us and guide us we ask you, Lord, to give us the courage to follow the guidance that you give us. We just pray also, Lord, now for all of our family and our friends. Almighty God, the Father of everlasting mercy, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never-failing care and love, both for this life and for the life to come knowing that you are doing for them things beyond all that we can ask or think through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Father God, we just thank you so much for the way that you do answer our prayers. You know, Lord, that sometimes we ask for things that are not impossible for you because nothing is impossible. But maybe we ask for things that don't quite fit in with what your plan is. Things that don't quite fit in for what the future of ourselves and the people that we are praying for holds. And so Lord we just ask that you would give us the insight and the the way to accept the outcomes of whatever it is that we ask for. If it doesn't go the way that we want it to go, Lord, help us to have the good grace to still give you thanks for whatever the outcome is. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. I thank you very much. Have a great day and, and um, I'll see you again this afternoon at 4 o'clock.